What up? How you living? How you doing? How you grooving? It is the L-E-F-K-O-E man. And we have ourselves our very first and very special Wednesday roundtable. You know Brian Westbrook. Hey, Rocket Man. What's up? What's going on, man? Who's joining us today, Brian? A little someone special. Mm. Someone very, very special. Thank you. Thank He's you. He's man. KB. Everybody, everybody knows him. That's Kyle right. Brandt. That's right. Thank Kyle you, Brian. Brandt. Yeah. Uh, the I'm I'm so excited because I haven't even previewed this at all. Yeah. I don't like to preview guests just in case you cancel on me, and then <laughs> I would be like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask a question and then I'll let you get into your story because I know you're very but, excited. But you, first, you gotta look at the T-shirt. You gotta talk about this. This is you a talk nice about shirt. It. This, this is a, this is a great shirt. It's 1975 from Jackson State. Walter Payton. That's, That's him getting sweetness. the draft call. That's him getting the draft call. Look Back in thing. the day, this is a Can true you story. Imagine the hat, Brian. What do you think? And look this at the is, cord on the phone. This is perfect. This is perfect. Back in the day when I was in college, I won the Walter Payton Award. How great is that? Which is the, the Division One AA version of the Heisman. Yes. So, and, he, and by this time, Walter had passed away. His brother was there. I didn't know that. And his mom. Made on your shirt. You did. Who did you think it was? Did you have a theory? Was I was, like, I or was like, I bet you that was a really funny comedian back in the 70s. <laughs> this is the sweetness. Shit. This is Walter Getting the Payton, draft brother. call, the Bears were going to take you. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That is amazing. This was my idol when I was growing up. I used to watch all the videos, the headband. Yes. The shoes. All right, so when spats. was the last time you saw Brian Westbrook? I'm so glad you asked, because it is good <laughs> to see you, Adam. But it's great to see 36, because the last time I saw Brian, we were celebrating our Eagles yes. winning the Super Bowl. That's Let me right. tell you, literally, br- w- listen, don't you leave. We were on the base of the Rocky Steps That's right. during Fuck. the victory rally, and I'm running around, and there's Papali, and there's Wentz, and there's Foles, and here's Westbrook, and we hugged, and we bonded in the joy of our Eagles finally winning a Super Bowl. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? I mean, your, <laughs> your liberal use of the word our. our. Is That's so a bond sense. that you'll never have, though, my Talk friend. Talk about it, 36. That's a Talk bond that it. you will never be able to share. It's moments like this that bring a yes. friendship together. All right, Kyle. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> Guys, this has been real. Lefko Show. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> See you later. So We did share an embrace at the Rocky Steps. We it was did. fantastic. We did. I never get that so moment So the first back. time he was on, I had to admit to him that the fact that he was embraced as the Eagles yep. guy in media yeah. angered me so much. I hijacked it from you. Because you're just such Your a Bears life. fan. I know. Um... <laughs> Motherfucker, that really, I didn't think that was going to impact me, and I felt that. It's all right. I have another <laughs> shirt that has a Deuce Daly getting his draft call. I'll wear that next time. Do more Ooh, Eagles love, okay? Like right. like 22. <laughs> I'm wondering, you guys are the same age. You went to college at the same time. You went to Villanova. Yeah. You went to Princeton. Yeah. Uh, was Villanova afraid to play the Tigers? Is that why it never <laughs> whoa, happens? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, because I know you both hate Penn. Penn, I hate with a passion. You don't have a problem with Penn. Yeah, I no, wouldn't think you guys do. No, that's not a rivalry for us. No. Delaware's our rival. Uh-oh. Not Penn. Oh, but no. I, Delaware. Listen, they were in a different weight class. Yeah. Penn, and when I was there, was like the U of the Ivy League. Right. You know, uh. A lot of guys with gold chains with horns on them. They talked a lot after, a little dirty. They beat the crap out of us. We right. were yeah. really bad. We yeah. were, and we had nothing for Brian's Villanova teams. Princeton. Now. I mean, that's a, I used to train up there at Lawrenceville. Yeah, Lawrenceville. When I was coming out of college. Yeah. I used to train up there at the little, the school, Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville Prep. Yeah, yeah. Of course, my roommate Prep. was from there, yeah. I used to be up there every well. dog going down. You stayed at a hotel, was there for weeks. Did you? Just training up there. That's right. That's my man. I wish we would have played your team. You guys would have beat us by 50, though, Brian. It would have been fun, though. It would have <laughs> for been you. Fun. Yeah, it would have been fun for me. Yeah. Did you get drunk at the parade? Ah. Like, uh, like, I've already told, like, I've got, I got shit. Well, I mean, right. you're supposed to, right? You're supposed to have a couple yeah. drinks here. I just don't know yeah. what, like, former players do. Like, fans, that was our release. That yes. was, like, yeah. but for a former player, like. Yeah, I, I didn't get drunk. I had a beer or two, but I didn't get drunk, no. Did I, you have a moment where you, this is, I should, eh, I'm sorry. Have you ever <laughs> had a moment where you, like, looked at the beat pill on the stage and you were, like, fucking uh, backup safety? I uh-huh, should be on uh-huh. there. Well, uh-huh. there was a moment at the game. after, Right after the game, I'm like, they're going to win this thing. And I'm like, man. I should have won this. You mm-hmm. had a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you're a little I mean, because as a player, it's natural. It, yeah, it's natural that you want that team. I'm happy for the team. I'm happy for yes. the guys. But I kind of want it to be me. I want to be happy for me too. There was a lot of your teammates there that day. Oh, I mean, a lot it was. of yeah. your a lot era of guys of I played with there. And, Absolutely. And you guys were thrilled for him, but like that had to be a little bit like. Yeah, no, you want it to be you. You're happy for other people, but yeah. you want to be a part of the fun too. Yeah. And unfortunately, we we, we were. I just know I I had put in like three long weeks as an Eagles fan, so to finally have that payoff after I think it was like more like twenty days, just sort of three weeks. Yeah. It was very validating for me. Well, as the Eagles, Eagles guy, fans right? embraced you though. <laughs> I know. I mean, the in, the Eagles nation <laughs> embraced Yo, you. Shut they, the fuck. They 
They kicked you out. They kicked kicked the old He's still cheering out. for Coy Detmer over yeah. there, hoping he's going to win it. He loves Coy Detmer. Do you like Coy? Of course. Coy's I hilarious. Coy. hilarious. What's he hilarious? I don't know. I, I have no clue. Raising no? kids, I have no clue. Probably just messing around somewhere, but Coy is a hilarious dude. Everybody talked about Ty. I was a Coy guy in no. the Detmer family. I, did. I liked him. Coy was great. Yeah, right? Coy was great. How um how you doing with Trubisky right now? Like, as a Bears? Who? Trubisky. No, Trubisky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the hottest take of the week. I mean, it really has some heat on it, is the Bears are better with Chase Daniel. It's bullshit. It's nonsense. And there's a lot of people saying it. I do a weekly call with the Chicago radio station every single week. Their callers are saying, screw it. Don't care if Trubisky's out. This is better. I got asked that by a Toronto radio station. They're like, are they better? And I was like, did you guys pass out a pamphlet of awful NFL (laughs) takes this week? Everybody loves a backup quarterback. No matter if they play good or not. Everybody loved A.J. Feely. Everybody loved Coy. Mm-hmm. You love the backup because you're not satisfied with the starter. I think it's and your expectation is so much higher for him. And it, what's funny is, is all of that confidence goes away after the first play. Of course. It's like you see them drop back and you look at Chase Daniel and you go, you can't make that five-yard out throw to Allen Robinson every time. I know. No. Ch- Chase Daniel, though, has something as an athlete that I think is really rare. He's really familiar with what he is and what he's not. Mm-hmm. Like, he knows – there's a skill an athlete can have about playing within themselves. Like, you ever play pickup ball, and, like, the biggest guy on the court, like, always wants to shoot threes. That's right. Always. And it's like, dude, go to the low block and get rebounds. Chase Daniel knows exactly what he is not. Trubisky, I don't think, even really knows what he is as a player yet. He I still agree. feels a little like Bambi on the ice. But Chase Daniel comes in and he's like, look, I'm going to do this, 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 and that's all I got. If you like it, let me play. That's there's from a value years. in that. That's from years of being a backup. And you're yeah. finally saying, you know what, this is what I do well. I'm going to just go do that. Trubisky still thinks that. He can be a legitimate starter. And I think, obviously, he is a starter. Yeah. But he just, talent-wise, he's think, proven that I he's not good enough. I think you nailed it the first half of that sentence. Mitchell Trubisky still thinks. Yeah. And mm. that's what I see when I see Mitchell Trubisky play is he's still thinking about the plays. He's right. still checking the arm yes. band. Chase is going to go in there and go, I got it. I was Drew Brees' secretary mm-hmm. for a few years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've And then I went up and I taught Carson Wentz everything he knows. He knows this offense inside and out, and they might be able to run more plays, which mm-hmm. might help the running game, and maybe he's better at checking out the line of scrimmage. But I look at your defense, and I said this Monday, I think they're a top five side of the ball in the sport right now. Yeah, I did too. Kansas City's offense, um, the Bears' defense, I think can win you guys nine games by themselves. I know. And if Chase can just set up a running lane for for David Montgomery, they have a chance. I think you guys – Beat the shit out of, out of the Raiders oh, it's gonna be in terrible. London. It's like, I fun- think it's a 25 point win. Do you? Even with Chase Daniel at quarterback, I do yes. too. Yes. Khalil Mack is going to go out there and be like, apologize to Derek Carr after the game for the beating he just. <laughs> the good thing about Chase Daniels is that he, Daniel Day, is that he's going to run the offense as it's designed. Yes. He's not going to ab lib. He's going to be three step drop, ball out, whether it's a completion or not. He's going to run it as you design it, and that's 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 cool for the receivers. That's good for the offensive line. Same thing for the offensive coordinator. You know exactly what you're going to get. The problem is his upside is just yeah, it's low. No. It's like here. It's, it's like that right. tiny house show yeah. on HGTV. That's I know it. what you said, Brian. Though is perfect because. Because there's also something going on with Chase Daniel right now. He's first team all name mispronunciation. Yeah. There's a chronic thing spreading. There has to be an S on there. Why, why not? Of course there should be an S. Should be it, an S. My it's favorite Daniels. part is, is that he. I you knew it. It's annoying as hell. I, I apologize again. He said Chase Daniels ab living. And I was like, that was <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ab living. Yeah. See, that's great. All right. So, but I, hold, I want to admit something because I just said no. something. When I read that yeah. quote on Monday about no, Andy Reid saying that Mozart, Mozart had yeah. paintings. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking am an idiot. I love it. No, but I was like, like a Mozart yeah, had paintings. Sure, of course. Because yeah. he, he sold it. Damn if you it. say it with conviction, it works. Nobody knows. Yes. Nobody like pays Jackson it. Pollock had incredible symphonies for his entire <laughs> career. Mm-hmm. And if you just sell it like that, yeah. that's it. But it's there's something funny with, with Khalil Mack. All right. So he's going to London. He's going against the biggest offensive lineman in the league, Trent Brown, the highest paid two. Go back to the Bears Packers opener. I got to be at Soldier Field. I got to be on the field well before the game. And I see Khalil Mack from across the field, and he's still in streets, okay? It's well before the game, and he's got he's huge, and he's got this shirt on that has, like, the KM logo, like, custom made or whatever. I was like, oh, that's Khalil Mack. I want to walk over to him. And as I get closer and closer, I go, wait, is that Khalil Mack? And the guy goes, you, I know you from the network. Get over here. And I walk forward. The gentleman that I was talking to was Khalil Mack's father. Oh, wow. Sandy Mack is his name. And I, believe me when I tell you, he looks exactly like Khalil Mack. Same stature, same biceps, same face, everything. 
but like a hugely gregarious personality. It might, it's like as if it was Spice Adams' personality put in Khalil Mack's body. You got to see this guy. Because right. my Sandy mind immediately Max. went to something. Sandy Mack. That's a great name. Oh, it's the greatest Sandy name of all time. Mack. What's your name? Sandy Mack. Sandy God name Mack. Yeah. Yeah. That's an and intimidating name, actually. I immediately thought, like, if you could t- is there a better ever father son more more physically Ooh. intimidating combo like if you're playing chicken in the pool chicken fights that's exactly and, where and my rem- mind and don't forget Khalil Mack and uh Derek Carr would have epic basketball battles in the pool when they played in Oakland is that true they talked about it every off season that's <laughs> what i give a fuck about and so they would and Derek Carr would always say he would dunk on Khalil Mack so now i'm imagining Sandy Mack yes. with oh, yeah. Khalil on top you think i think see, i think Khalil's got I need to bottom, see right? what Aaron Donald's dad looks like that's Baron Donald. How about <laughs> Baron Donald? <laughs> what if we keep it on the Bears? You. What if it was the Mac father and son? You take Kyle Long ooh, with Howie. Ooh, that's fucking baller. Ooh. Because I I started thinking immediately of Kyle and Bob Brandt, and we're over in two seconds. Yes. What about uh, Adam and Bruce Lefko? How would they do against the Max? How the fuck did you know my I dad? I do my research too, uh, Lefko. You're not that? the only one I who has I found out your dad's name today, too. Right? So yeah, I think it would be, uh, he would have a lot of, we would have a lot of strategies. Big Bruce. And then they would fall apart immediately. Yes. What about Tariq and Moisha Cohen? <laughs> <laughs> with that, with that <laughs> I'll leave that joke to you, but I don't know. Tariq, I think, would have to be on top, right? You guys listen up on chair. Can you imagine you? <laughs> if Tariq Cohen's dad was like 6'5"? If his dad was like as big as Sandy yeah, Mack? That would be hilarious. I recommend that all Bears fans or football fans Google Sandy Mack. You need to see this gentleman. It looks, I mean, he can do a Freaky Friday with his son, not his twin, his son. It's amazing. All right, so this is the first time we've no. done a roundtable on Wednesdays. Kyle, yeah. you're kicking us off. And the idea is, is that there isn't a host. There are just top. Topics. And they're not just very intense football questions. Right. They're also ones about life. I have topics in the jar. We're each going to pick. Ingber helped me come up with them. But first, we have some social lubricants, as they would say, right. to get it going. These are topics that me and Ingber would say with uh, people on the road. Ingber came up with these, and it tells you a lot about personalities. First one is Thanos and cheese. Got it. You have all the power in your fingers. Okay. When you snap, every cheese in the world goes away except for one for every human in the world what cheese are you keeping i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna go blue cheese you're a fucking savage i'm crazy it's blue inevitable cheese. the crumbles i like the blue cheese crumble brian david, i absolutely david right now, love it now is in the back <laughs> yelling are you being serious dead serious you I are, live and die for blue cheese you I love are, really? crumble. yeah i do so you're turning every wow. pizza into that's, a blue cheese that's pizza a shame. People are reaching for prosciutto and blue cheese. Do you know what you've done? Yeah, what have I done? Oh, Chaos. Uh, That's just disappointing, actually. <laughs> B-L-E-U, by the way. I want you to spell it properly. <laughs> it's, I, I'm a it's blue cheese Chase guy. It's the Chase Daniel of cheese. That's right. Um, what is your what is the cheese that you would kick? Well, I'll tell you this. I hate cheese. Okay. Hate, I hate all cheeses. Yes. Except for mozzarella cheese. And, on the and pizza. that is the correct answer. On the pizza. That's the only I mean, place I'm it can be. I'm falling asleep over here. Mozzarella, mozzarella is No the cheese. Answer. I, I hate cheese. What's up with that? Why? I, 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 guess I literally hate cheese. I, I, I hate American. I hate the. What, is, is American the yellow one? Or that, cheddar. Yeah, cheddar. Yes. I hate that. I hate all cheese. You don't like the taste or it backs you up? So you don't eat nachos? Nachos? I, don't, I don't like the taste. I don't like anything. <laughs> Do you eat pizza? I like pizza. Mozzarella. That's it. Mozzarella is the correct answer. Okay. It is the most versatile. It could be right, used the on. most places. So many Lefko, different things. Someone who spent make. three weeks thinking about this question, tell me why mozzarella is the best. Because I have two seconds. It? What do you got? Why is it the best? You mozzarella is the best cheese because it maintains the most important food groups and you don't lose anything. Yeah. It could be eaten by itself. It could be eaten on a pizza. <laughs> oh, cheddar sounds great. I don't want a fucking cheddar, cheddar pizza. Cheddar pizza is disgusting. I can put mozzarella what are you on a about sandwich. Maintains the, the, the taste. The sh- the you structure can use of the structural support. It's a load bearing sandwich. cheese. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? If we're going to take out this cheese. wall, it's going to cost us a lot of money. So mozzarella, mozzarella is the mozzarella. Frank mozzarella. Gore of cheeses. Ooh. Has blue, stand- blue cheese is, I'm trying to think of a player that's wildly specific and upset so much. Uh, Cam Newton of cheeses. Yeah, I, I think it's it has of- its moments of, of, of being perfect with a wing. Yeah. But other than that, no, mozzarella blue cheese doesn't. Go You're away. telling me that you would look at like a block of blue cheese and see the green and be like, "I'll eat that straight." I'll bite right out of it. You're I'll bite right out of it. Suck. I think. See, I think it's the Gardner Minshew of cheese. You're a, the it's savage. Different. It's wild. It works. See, like mozzarella to me 
is I'm trying to think of the most boring player in the league. Mozzarella is it's a, it's a safe answer. It's fine. It's shredded. It's yeah. good, but like it's got no kick to it. I would mm. expect someone like you would at least go Pepper Jack. Uh, but I'm looking out for the whole world. <laughs> Westbrook doesn't even like cheese. No, I don't it's like an cheese. Incredible so, uh, take. All You're these right. is no good. Never mind no the world. Good. I'm worried about me. The, okay. the world. Come on. There are um, three candy bars. When right. I snap my fingers, oh. yeah. you have to get rid of one of them. <laughs> Snickers, Three Musketeers, Reese's Cup. Westbrook, you lead. Reese's will never be in my presence. I don't want it around me. First of all, here's the thing. This guy. Peanut butter <laughs> Kyle's, and chocolate. Kyle's face Peanut butter and chocolate Ryan, should not go players. together. What? what? They, they don't go together. I'm just going to let you know. You sit down for a second. Oh, come on. Peanut Ryan. butter and chocolate should not be together in the same place at the same time. Now, peanut, uh, peanuts uh -huh. and chocolate, yes. A little caramel in there, a little wafer bar. people literally say things like, Do not put Adam peanut Thielen butter. and Stefan Diggs go together like chocolate and peanut butter. Like it's a, one of the they they not, not, chocolate No, it's peanut butter and jelly. That's what they go together. <laughs> okay. Like uh, 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 I, cheese and wine. Not peanut butter and chocolate. Don't Do you put remember them, the old commercial back that's, in the that's, day? That's wrong. For Reese's, where there's a guy walking in a mall and he's eating a candy bar, and there's a girl, and inexplicably she's eating peanut butter in the mall, and they turn the corner and run into each other, and the peanut butter goes on the chocolate, yeah. and they're like, "Wow, you got to YouTube this." It's the most, it's no, like they should have never made that. They don't go together. You they got peanut butter, my chocolate, you got chocolate, and it's how all do very you say sexual? that candy? By the way, what Reese's? Yeah, good. How do you say it? No, when people say Reese's, oh, I get on. very upset. Get out of here. No, yeah. Reese's. I don't say it at all because I don't like it. I they, thought they, they, you were going to say you that it's the number the one cup. candy. Well, there's Reese's a lot of cup people. is the best candy of all time. There are a lot time. of people that are making the mistakes out there. <laughs> like you're gonna, it disappoints me. You're going to tell me that Bran Flakes is the best cereal of all time. No, sure. the best candy, I would say Kit Kat. Snickers are okay. in there. Uh, Milky Way I, Milky Way is the second worst. So it's Reese's, <laughs> then Milky Way. Just saying. Have you ever tried the Reese's egg? Because the peanut butter ratio is greater than in the cup. Yeah, it's even better. It. No, Come Easter no. time, you got to go get the egg. <laughs> you, you know what's bad? Here's a funny thing. Now, <laughs> Reese's, they, so I've said this on Twitter plenty of times. Oh, That's man, why I'm bringing it, it up. I've been, I've been angry at myself for three weeks because three weeks I've been wanting to yell at you or no. figure out your brain. And because, today is the day. Because I'm a principled man, and I stand <laughs> b beside my, my facts, the thought process. Reese's actually sent me. A box full of little the, the peanut butter serious? cups, t-shirts and everything, and I and I for, I, I just That's forbid true. my family. <laughs> this is absolutely true from eating it. It so sat there for a long so time. So you are taking your preference to your three kids, and yeah. none of them will enjoy Reese's. They they didn't eat it for a long time, I and then just the one Reese's, day they Daddy, they disappeared. The t-shirt they're wearing the t-shirts now. The candy wrappers all thrown the around on the floor. The, what you need to do is this is good social media. Is you take a Reese's cup and you title it the correct way to eat a Reese's, uh -huh. and then you show and then you put it in the trash can. Oh. Trash it. That's a good video. That would be good. If, put it on your feet. I'll take all the. Adam, you Brian Westbrook, Eagles legend, doesn't like cheese yeah. and Reese's. I, I heard you're also not a fan of uh, beer, Puppy sex, dog. and Breaking Bad. Right? Breaking you, Bad, you, terrible show. Hate, hate sex, it's boring. And... Beer, terrible. Wow, that's some takes, Brian. <laughs> cheese I, and Reese's. I wrote an article that you were the peanut butter to the Deuce Daily Chocolate. Ah, no, you did not. You, didn't, no, did, you not. did not write that. Do you have any other weird food things? Let's just clear that. I mean, Do you cheese, like bread? Cheese is no good. <laughs> yeah, I like bread. Okay, good. we got something. Um... Peanut butter and chocolate just don't go together. I, I gotta think of some more. You love cilantro? Cilantro. I do like cilantro. Okay. I, I oysters? Do no, no, oysters, no. No, because that's I, a I've, had, I've had a couple bad experiences. Sure. You, you put a little peanut butter on that ice. Oh, baby. No, it's no, no, no. <laughs> you, you have one too many oysters, it turns into a, a, a bathroom trip. That's just yeah, not. It's yeah, not I hear that. I'm just gonna say that. that my two warm ups, I was not expecting to get an argument about Reese's and blue cheese. This yeah. is exactly what I needed. This is yeah. great. Kyle, you are the guest. Reach into the cup, grab one. All right, here we go. I'm going to reach into the cup. Do I read it or do you want me to hand it yeah, to you? Yeah, read it over. All right. This, read it in your best game show host voice. This, all right, here we go. What's the one tweak you have to make the NFL better? What should we do to make the NFL better? One tweak. Go ahead. So we all have to come up with what's one thing you want to change about the NFL. Okay. If you come up with one right away. Uh, I got this idea. Okay. <laughs> They've had so many problems with pass interference. I think they should make it reviewable. What if they could look at pass interference? Wouldn't that just fix everything? <laughs> if they could, if may, say it appeared to be pass interference, all you have to do is flag it and look at it. I think that'll work great. They should really, guys, how bad is this thing going? Bro, it's the uh, worst thing. It's crazy. I it's crazy. Hate it. I watched Thursday Night Football with a Packers fan. Go on. When the Eagles cornerback, I think it was Vontae Maddox, dove into the chest <laughs> of Marquez Valdez scanning, <laughs> yeah. and they were like, no, nah, no penalty. I, I sat there, I was like, this is what what system are they fucking running right yes. now? I think in a weird way, Riveron is worried about 
embarrassing his referees by changing too many calls. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. It's not making the game fun. There are too many stoppages. They said in the beginning of the year there's a chance this only lasted for a season. I hope so. The worst part is what do you, think, Brian? you go to the interview. I mean, you go to the the, re, the the review and you're like, hold on, time out. Everybody knows his pass interference, yeah. except for the ref. Yeah. That's you're like, huh? it's been blatant so far. Like, come on. These are obvious. The idea so, now is that they're saving. They have the rule and not for any of this nonsense. It's for if there is another huge play in the playoffs. To at the end, right, gonna, yeah. It's like a cyanide pill. Like we have it if we need it. Mm. But I think this could go down as like one of the worst rule changes that when it's NFL 150 or whatever, we'll look back on 2019. Like remember when you could review pass mm-hmm. interference? Mm-hmm. Like remember when the NBA changed the ball and they made a complete and yeah. Shaq lost his shit and was yeah. so mad about it. And they're like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Go back to the old ball. This pass interference thing sucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. And I love Al Riveron. I've met him several times. He goes on Twitter and he says, there was no discernible blah, blah, blah. And he always sends Al. He writes his name in Uh the tweet, Uh which is a weird thing to do. Hulk Hogan does it too. It's kind of a strange thing when people sign their tweets. We know it's from you. We We know it says Al Riveron. We know that. You don't need to write Al. Like, Ingber has a few (laughs) where he wants to get rid of kickoffs. Uh, Ingber believes. Kickoffs, absolutely. Ingber believes that you should always have to go for two. Every time? I love that. Every time. I love that. It gets a little XFL y when you start saying you have to go for like the Dan Cortezification. It becomes an MTV shock jock. Yeah. You gotta still make it a little dignified. Every time you can't kick extra points anymore? Come on. I I in a weird way, this is a little bit reactant to the Rams. I don't like how much time the coaches have in the headsets. Sometimes I I wish that it was like the college thing where they had four signs. pictures on a board and oh, they're doing that's signs. So fun. It's just a lot of fun, but also there's just like I'm watching the Bengals on Monday night, and I'm watching Andy Dalton get out there, hard count, and then they all it's like watching yeah. Baylor looking over the side. It's just they can communicate so much. It's taking, I don't know, that's not a good one. There is a thing with, with Nagy and the Bears with Trubisky that he's talking to him way into the play clock, and it's just short of being like throw it to Burton. Like it's right. almost like remember Madden back in the day when the little passing windows and it was like X, Y, and Z and the guy's waving his hand. It's almost to the point where the coach can tell them who to throw to too. It gets exactly. deep, doesn't it? I don't like it. You're you're making players that have no ability to read defenses. Yeah. You have no ability to read coverages. You're kind of handicapped in guys. Here's my idea. Yeah. yeah. And, and oh I yeah, think we got, that, we got. I think you can do it. It's just has been frowned upon so much that guys are just so specialized. I think that every game for every team, mm-hmm. you should have at least Five guys that play offense and defense. Two ways. What? You have to have two-way players. Go on, talk about I mean, you, well, you, you have to have them. You, you're telling me that some of the best athletes in the game, Odell Beckham Jr., he can't play cornerback? Mm-hmm. You're talking all this trash. Okay, mm-hmm. now you have to check me, and now you have to do it the other way. Oh, the linebacker gets a hit on the running back? Guess what? Now the linebacker's the running back, and I get to go hit him. Mm-hmm. How about that? I think you should get penalized if your celebrations aren't good. Ooh. So what is there, like Simon Cowell or something? Yes. 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 <laughs> Randy Jackson. Not for me, dog. <laughs> nope. Sorry, bro. That's a for Hollywood. 15-yard <laughs> penalty. That is incredible. I, I will say, Brian, on yours, one of the letdowns of the game is like, if LeBron dunks like on Kawhi, mm-hmm. I like it that immediately LeBron has to guard back. Kawhi. That's, that's my point. You know play. what I mean? Like there's there's no people used to freak out about, oh, it's Eli versus Peyton. And it's not Eli versus Peyton. They don't play each other. They just stand on the opposite side of the field. I would love some genuine back and forth. What if quarterbacks get on the other side and now they're a DN? <laughs> Right, and now you can go t- attack Taysom another quarterback. Hill. Taysom Hill, I feel Taysom like he has. You get a different type of athlete in those positions. Now, I'm just saying. Now, do you like the rule better if the other team gets to choose which player and Perfect. at what time of the game, or better. do the own teams get to be like, we'll put Odell? Yes, I, I I like it both ways. First of all, we'd like to put Sam Bradford at safety for this. <laughs> yes. play. And we yes. want Jake Elliott at defensive tackle for the Eagles. <laughs> you like it five? Yeah. Come on yeah. in. It's all good. right, Westbrook, you pull one. Get in. Go on. Oh, oh man. This is crazy. Get a good one now. The bad part is, I know Adam has made these all up, so he wants A lot of these are Ingber creations. That's great. Ingber's the best. (laughs) If you were involved in a massive bank heist. Hold on, I want more game show hosty out of you. (laughs) Here we go. Take two. Take two. I the bad part is that was my game. That was it. You need to crank it up. You can do more. A little bit more. Okay. All right, guys. You're just talking like a white guy. That, that's, that's your game show. Those host. are game show hosts. I know. I know. You want me to talk like Steve Harvey? Yeah. He doesn't have Actually, a show you know anymore. What? I would like you to do this Black one. Black game show host, just... not named Steve Harvey for 5,000, please, Alex. <laughs> Wayne Brady. <laughs> Wayne Brady. Bra- anybody else? Is Here we go. Two? If we were involved in a massive bank heist and everyone's code name was different, it was a different international city, what would be your city name? 
So this is off of the Netflix show that I recommend to everybody. Ingber oh, got me yeah. onto it. It's called uh, Money Heist. Mm -hmm. And the, they do not learn each other's names. They all have different uh, city names in the world. So there's mm. Helsinki. And they're all very, and there's Spanish. And there's De yeah. De Denver. And there's uh, Rio. Oh. What would your city name be? Um, I think I would go with Cairo. Mm. And I would do K-Y-R-O, because I'm Kyle. <laughs> Cairo, that's the ancient, it's the cradle of civilization. We have the pyramids there. That's I heard good. it's kind of dangerous and I mysterious. Like Ky there's a sphinx there. I might be Cairo. Mel I might be Melbourne. Melbourne. Melbourne? Melbourne? That's, it's a little Australia? To say. Is that, was that what you're talking about? No, Melbourne? Everything's I'm, cooler in Australia. I'm Barcelona. Ah, <laughs> so uh, Barcelona, gracias. That's so might be, insufferable. Might Quebec is a good one. Yeah, Quebec. it's not Quebec. Eh. Quebec. Like Why? Right, wait, so, why is Quebec a good one? What do you mean? Like, I don't know. I, I, I just in your like criteria. city names that have two <laughs> syllables. I just, Cairo. Yeah, exactly. I think you nailed it. I think okay. you did incredible. What about Westbrook? What do you think? Uh, that's a good one. And it has um, to be international. Like I really can't just be want to hear you intro. Hint, for, to, this is a <laughs> dumbass question, first of all. Of course this, it is. And this crazy <laughs> voice that you want me to say it in. Uh, city name. Let's think of a good one. Like Monte Carlo. Ooh, oh. Monte Carlo. That's that's it. I love that you threw an accent. Monte, Monte Carlo. Carlo. This, this, I don't know what accent that is. That's. Just, I also like that you did a gesture. This, I, they're, they're all, all my accents are the same thing. He Monte just Carlo. Flicked away a piece of cheese. Yeah, Monte yeah. Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not blue. Cheese out of here. <laughs> right what, into my um, mouth. What would like Patrick Mahomes' city name be though? It would have to be fast paced, yep. exciting. Yeah. Vegas. Ooh. Vegas. Vegas. Vegas is a pretty good city name. Vegas. But you have to go international. That was international. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he'd, he'd be like a Monaco, maybe Monaco, no. or uh, uh, what's the one in South Africa? Are, are we talking I'm about his personality the or the, his game? Because if we're talking about his game, I'm saying Cancun. It's a party town, high schoolers, college kids, uh. drinking. <laughs> it's fun. It's Cancun. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Brian actually might be better at this game than He's me. Good. He's uh, very good. Let's do what city would Frank Gore be? Frank Gore has stood the test of time. This, he would be Rome. He's been around That's for a long great. time. He's he's just he's a pillar in the community. Everybody looks up to him. He would, if you could say a name, he would be the Colosseum. That's what he would. Mm. Okay, Frankie Gore. I think he, I mean, you go by like Jerusalem or something. What's the Jerusalem. oldest Bethlehem? <laughs> I don't know. Wherever it may be, we bring gifts of myrrh and gold. The wise men for Frank. I don't know. What the would, oldest one. What would Gardner Minshew's international name be? Jacksonville. Bags. <laughs> That's in the most perfect Jackson. city of all time, right? Yeah. It, it does it. Does the Gardner Minshew thing Beach. work if he's or in Myrtle Beach or if he's in like Seattle or Green Bay? I don't think it works as well. Like, there's never been a city Myrtle that's Beach. more suited to it. Like a, a quarterback, mm. it's perfect. You can practically see him in a lifted pickup and a tall boy energy drink. It's so it's so Jacksonville. It it is Jackson, and people don't realize. Like people think Jacksonville is Florida, and they think it. And no. it's it's more like Tell me Georgia, about it. South Georgia. It's the stem of Florida. Okay. It's gross. I'll tell you this. We we played a Super Bowl there in 04, right? And so everyone's like, hey, we're going to Florida. We're going to have you a remember great that time. One, right? You remember that one, right? You remember that Yes, I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, it was, we suffered. Everybody's bringing T-shirts and shorts, and we get there, and it's 50 degrees, freezing. Everyone's buying jackets. Terrible. <laughs> and Jacksonville, Jacksonville sucks. Just want to let you know. People thought it was going to be Miami, right? Yeah, yeah it was beautiful. not. We, we didn't get the memo. the stem of Florida. Yeah, it's no, gross. It's really <laughs> gross. It wasn't good. It wasn't a I'm good time. I'm trying to think of any other NFL player that would be a – who would be an NFL player that would be good at leading a bank heist? Mm. Like, so like Brady the, Brady would be like, well, let's settle our watches. You know what I mean? They would be very prompt. Um Breeze would Breeze would just think about it and analyze it and yeah. Quarterbacks are always going to got be a guard good. here, a guard there. Quentin Nelson would be a perfect guy to be. No, the what about you, what about but your guy Quentin he, Williams? He would not be a good guy to have on a heist. He would He'd be, be smiling. The the whole time, he's right? the kind of guy where the whole heist falls apart yes. because he's eating too much and he's he didn't turn on guy. his radio because he actually wants to listen to a cartoon. Yeah. He left yeah. our plan. And like someone Names in the desk would say, like, can we take a selfie before you go and he take his mask but off? But he does smile. have one great moment where like someone's running to go hit the button, turns the corner, and gets knocked out yes. by running into Quinnen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Quinnen Williams like, did I do that? Like, yeah, you did, Quinnen. Yeah. Yeah. You need you? everybody in the bank heist, though. You need one guy who's the muscle who comes in and like kneecaps somebody to show the yes. bank you mean business. Perfect. I think that's Quinnen Nelson. I, oh. I, or Burfick, too. Ooh. But Burfick's Burfick also the guy, the guy in Heat that kills a guy and wasn't supposed to kill a guy. Yeah. Wayne too Grove? Aggressive. Way, I had way to get it on. That's that's Burfick. You're right. He, Perfect has to get it on. That's a great call. I'm trying to think who else would be the really good bank heisters. Like who's who is tactical and mischievous? And we need a guy on the safe. The guy Al who's going to put the, the 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 head thing on the well, safe. Well, I have the guy. Alvin Kamara is the one that bends over a million times and squeezes <laughs> the lasers <laughs> through the laser sight. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. good.
That's good. He's a guy in uh, Ocean Elevens that hid inside of the, exactly. the box. That's, he it, that's either bend. Tariq Cohen. It might be more Tariq Cohen. Tariq Cohen. You think? He's a small guy. There's, that, there's yeah. that old movie with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Trapman where the whole movie is just about her bending her butt underneath the lasers. And God, is it a great shot. That would be the Tariq Cohen. Yeah. Bending under the lasers for Sean Connery to get his jollies. That's a creepy movie. All right, what do we got next? One more time, Catherine. Yes, please. Another take. Lower. Hearts <laughs> we must trust. <laughs> I love the blue that's cheese. A, that's the same thing as my Monte Carlo. But that's the that's same exactly thing. right. Yeah, say welcome to the rock. In no, your show. <laughs> welcome to the You're rock. You're the man now, dog. What do you got? <laughs> welcome to da, 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 da. Hey. You're an NFL owner. Okay. You just fired your coach. You have to pick someone that's on television to be your new head coach. Who would you pick? Okay. So there's a youth movement now. You got to go mm. young. Um, who's that guy from the Baby Driver movie? Ansel Elgort, <laughs> is that his name? Wow. You see Baby Driver, no, Brian? I haven't seen, no. He's a great looking guy. He doesn't have much to say. It seems to be sort of like off-brand Robert Pattinson. I'm going to go with Ansel Elgort. That's my guy. I have a text message. Plus he in knows how to drive. I, drive. Okay. I, I got to look this guy up. The question, the question is mainly for like TV analysts, yeah, no. but I said I'm purposely <laughs> leaving it open-ended because yeah. I don't know where KB is going to go. And so Elgort, I, I obviously was not I prepared pick, for these questions. I would pick Howie Long. Howie Long? Yeah. Why do you say Why? that? I, Why? I've been talking about Howie Long recently. Why do you say that? I believe that I look at these coaches and I, I think that Howie would be the guy that would be able to be a, like very disciplined but he would be like the enforcer coach that stands on the sideline like Mike Tomlin and doesn't actually do anything because okay. he has an OC and a DC. But I think he could lead groups of men like right now. Like how he is so disciplined as a human that I think it would carry on well. But I also think that he knows how to interact with athletes because of his sons. Yeah. You can say my answer is awful. No, no, it is awful. But I'm thinking of a team. Kyle Brandt would also be a great choice, too. Kyle Brandt would be perfect. As a coach, I heard it's like the worst life of all time. No, it's a terrible life. We're not talking terrible. about the life. Though. We're just, so and that's what I want for you. I'm thinking about Bastard. the Miami Dolphins. Who would be perfect for them? Oh, who can step into that? First mess? of all, it has to be a comedian. Okay. Because the, right now, they're a joke. They're messing around. Nice. Okay, I would like to. Th I would like to elect someone from Philadelphia. Okay, we short in stature, cool man, but hilarious. Kevin Hart. Ah, uh, Kevin, Kevin Hart, Hart to coach the Dolphins. Coach the. Now this team will still be terrible. So they still had that going on, but it would be funny. Yeah, but at the same and time, and that's all that matters. And, 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 and as you a might fan, as well I own it. At, right? at least you could be funny. I feel like when Kevin Hart doesn't have original things to say, which is a lot, I feel like he goes and walks out. And so you're only going to have him for the coach for like a quarter. Maybe you're like, this is, this is bullshit. <laughs> and he's that's out. That's my Kevin Hart. <laughs> right now, the, 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 the tagline for that Joker movie, it goes, uh, I thought my life was a tragedy, but it turns out it's a comedy. That could be the Miami Dolphins. It could be the funniest. What about The Rock? Time. Maybe The Rock would be perfect. He was really good in that one movie with troubled youth. He's an intimidator. Yeah. He's big. He could probably play and coach at the same time. I would say I like uh, the Rock. And I when would they introduce say, him as head coach. You bring out Sean Carmen and he goes, "Welcome to the Rock." And he comes out and he's your coach. Can you imagine that? That'd be no, so he cool. Comes out, he comes out. <laughs> Usually, you have the team come out the tunnel. Yes. The team just doesn't come out. They the team they just go stand there and the Rock. He would the coach him, comes out. Does his, does his wrestling thing? Yes. He yeah. He would he would give amazing pregame speech. There's no doubt. Coach Johnson. What yeah. about coach? I don't know if you guys watch Succession. Rock. But what if the coach of the Dolphins was Roman Roy? Do you guys which, watch Which Succession? one is that? I've seen a couple episodes, and uh, every Keon. single person I run into says you got to watch the Colk it. The Colkin. Oh, yeah, sure. The guy who uh, pleasures himself against the window. I saw that scene. Yes. Oh. Really interesting. He goes for it. That's the one scene you saw? Don't besmirch this show. <laughs> it's phenomenal. No, I know. It's great. I just what haven't shows are up. you watching right now? Arthur? Oh, sh yeah, you flip or flop. <laughs> I, we watch uh, nonsense HGTV BS. <laughs> you should see. I mean, uh, Peppa Pig which, is on at my which, house. Which <laughs> HGTV yeah. personality would be the best coach in the NFL right now? That's a great question. All right, I'm going to go Tarek Al Musa. <laughs> Which one is that? Tarek Al Musa is the guy from Flip or Flop who, I'll he tell gets you why. He's so frazzled, though. Gets real frazzled. However, they could buy a one bedroom tenement infested with human corpses built on a Native American uh, burial ground. Mm -hmm. And he's like, turns out we made $250,000. Time to find another house to flip. That show's called Flip or Flop. They never had a single flop in about 12 seasons. Doesn't right. matter. They always make money. I would do the twins. What are the twins' names? Oh, the Property Brothers? Yes. Yeah. Dude, have you ever have you ever heard the Property Brothers country album? Go on YouTube. They're country Shut singers. The fuck Dude, up. Property Brothers country singing. It's on there. 
It's something. The but best why, part about reality. Why would realistic? they make coaches? Because I one, I think that having twins coach a team. Yeah. You, you know, you can take a day off, let your twin brother yeah. come in. So yeah. you can actually be the only head coaches that have yes. normal sleep. Um, you have an assistant coach built in mm-hmm. uh, and you're always keeping people on their toes. Yes. This is an awful idea. No, because well, the brothers, ooh. one of them does the construction and one of them does the sales. So you would have one coach brother who does like, I handle the X's and O's and I, and then I handle like the personnel that actually yeah. could work. The or property. one actually does the coaching and the other one just does the press conference. I got yes. a perfect one. What, perfect right, one. what do you got? Property brothers Gordon Ramsey. Oh, Gordon okay, Ramsay. Okay. Here we go. We'll take your team from being average <laughs> to the next level. He rips on all the employees. Yes. He, he's the Bill Belichick of, of chefing. You're right. Ooh, I like That's it. who he is. You call this a bloody ruse? <laughs> Get on my face. Gordon Ramsay would be perfect. <laughs> you call that moving the A gap. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That haggard catcher's mid face of his. Very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, Who's the guy from Bar Rescue? Oh, John Taffer. That's Shut what, it down now. That's, that's what, what you just saying. say to the Dolphins. Yeah. Shut it down, Taffer. Taffer. He just makes Josh Rosen cry in yeah. the corner. Yeah. yeah. But hold on. Some people are Taffer guys. I'm a Robert Irvine guy. You ever see Robert Irvine? Yeah. Dude, he's got lats out to here. Mm-hmm. 6'3", 280, throwing the sledge. I like Robert Irvine. Bob I Irvine. agree. Because you know what? If I had John Taffer come in, yeah. I'd be like – I don't know if you live the advice you're giving. Yeah. No. Robert Irvine is like every minute is being yes. used. Oh, I love Robert Irvine. That's a fascinating question. I, I want to ask Brian something because I've, I've had this conversation a lot about like, all right, full confession. I finally said, screw it. I have to spend a little money. I hired a personal trainer for the first time in my life. Once a week. Congrats. Congrats. Very Congrats. expensive. But I said, I work on camera. I got to get my, t- my personal trainer is a brick shit house. He looks like Robert Irvine. Massive built guy. I've always been fascinated by coaches who are woefully out of shape because they demand incredible physical performance and dedication from their players, yeah. but they don't examine it themselves. Exhibit A, Coach Reed. Was there anything to that that, like, <laughs> you guys have to be so ripped and so dedicated, but he's a massively obese guy. Great coach, but, like, yeah. do they ever lose any credibility? That's like, how I no. felt about Matt Patricia this okay, year. Okay, yeah, for Running sure. after practice. Mark like, Mangino, oh, yeah, those guys. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you played for Andy forever. I, I love Andy. Of so I, I think that we, you know never, saying, we never looked at him that way. But I, I I can see your point because you have to be disciplined to six pack it up and be lifting all that other stuff. And Andy was a detail oriented. And I, I told this story before. The only thing that I ever saw Andy eat my entire career was a salad. That's it. I think I might have seen him eat a, a cheeseburger really? one time. I've never seen him eat anything but a salad and a cheeseburger. That's so how would happen? Then he goes home and like... I I just imagine that in his private time he enjoyed meals. Big peanut butter and chocolate guy. He's probably eating a lot of Reese's <laughs> in his private time, but I never saw it outside of. Uh, in, in a meeting room, yeah. in, in a cafeteria, nothing but salad. So someone Andy. shows up to camp and they fail the conditioning test. Yes. And Andy's saying, this, this is BS. You got to get yourself in shape. Get down and run it again. Are they like, <laughs> shut up, fat man. Andy, what do you know about he, getting in you shape? You also assess fines for being overweight. Damn. To the offensive line, most, most at least the offensive line. Yeah. They're usually Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, a little bit overweight. But Andy, that, and that's the part fines. where I go, I never thought about this with Andy because he was an offensive lineman. Uh-huh. And there's something about the acceptance of offensive linemen. You you had to put on all this weight, you have to mm-hmm. keep it. It's the smaller, stocky guys that, like, never played. Uh-huh. That, yeah, like, what business do you have? Right. Right. But but then, when like you said, like, the realistic nature of their jobs and how they work so much, and probably they're just, like, yeah. eating at their desk and all that. But they bring a pizza into the coach's room and have three slices. And you know, there's yeah, a lot of coaches in the NFL that never played football. Mm-hmm. One that that never was that hard to get over. Well, no, it, it's kinda, it's kind of weird. You're like, well, how do you know? And the good ones say this is where the hole for running back. This is where the hole should be. But you feel it. Figure it out for yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna mm-hmm. just tell you what you should be doing with the area you should be in, and you t- allow your skill level to do it. Like my my running back coach, great coach Ted Williams. He played baseball, never played football. He was a baseball he player. Played for the Red Sox, right? Not, no. <laughs> it's incredible. I heard his head was frozen or something. No, no. He, he was great. He was a great coach. But he also was like, listen, he knew his own limitations. Like, as a coach, listen, I can just tell you where, where it's going to be in the A-gap. A-gap to A-gap is your landmark, and just go do your thing. Wow. Um, My you, running back coach is named Pedro Martinez. It's an incredible coincidence. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What do you got? Hey, hey, <laughs> uh, have you commented to Deuce about uh, the weight he's put on? Um, Damn. I don't, I, I don't, had, I and the deuce is, deuce is one of my mentors. He's one of the guys I really respect. He's big, bro. He's gotten big. I mean, when he went to Pittsburgh, he probably went from like 230 to 250. Okay. Because he needed a pound. They were going to take a pounding out there in Pittsburgh. 
and he's gotten bigger since then. Were you on the team when LeVon Kirkland? I was. That was my rookie year. He came from Pittsburgh? Yeah. Came from Pittsburgh. I love LeVon Kirkland. LeVon Kirkland, he was 300 pounds. Yeah. yeah. He was 300 pounds. 300 pounds. And That's so, wild. So what happens in training camp, you go against the first team. And he was a starting linebacker at that point. So I'm the second team running back, and you're the first team. And so there were times where I had to try to figure out a way to block this man. And what were you playing at at that time? Were you? I was probably 200 pounds. And he's 200 And I'm just like, this is – the coaches was like, they don't they, – they would fast forward the part where I tried to block him because it was like, hey. What's dude, really incredible I'm not even gonna is try. Like, this yeah. is like 18 years ago. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know if Brian can stay in there and block LeVon Kirkland. And now we're like, Imagine. hey, LeVon Kirkland, you have no chance of guarding this running back yeah. in the flats. You're right. But still – that time they're like, we'd have to work on Westbrook, and it's like, no, you have to worry about this linebacker that Isn't can't that funny? run. Because yeah. you're a linebacker, you got to block the linebacker. That's how they did it back then. If you could switch the NFL, like I said, I would be the linebacker, he would be the running back, and let's see if he could block me. Mm. See what I'm saying? Do you little, think about that if you played right back. now? Like you see what McCaffrey's doing? Like that, oh, yeah. that was you, dude. Like, yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, easy. Yeah. I never thought that Christian McCaffrey was going to develop to this level to lead the league. That type was a of question thing. you got all the time. Absolutely. When they finally moved on from Deuce, the question that offseason was. Can Westbrook handle the load? That's right. Because you were like a 100 carry a year guy, yep. and then it spiked up to the 300. Yeah, and, and and McCaffrey has done a great job. How much of a chip was on your shoulder? That I lived it every day because I thought that I should have been a first rounder. I mean, still to this day, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It's just the no, truth. Do it, man. I, I, I well, toot toot. But do I mean, I, I I lead the NCAA in yards from scrimmage. Yeah. Period. And yeah. I was a good player, but I the competition level. It wasn't anything about. You know, can you play? Where you are you better than all these other guys? It's yeah. a competition level, right? And so I kind of felt that there was a chip on my shoulder my entire career because people are down. I was I was at the Senior Bowl, an All Star game, and at All Star games everybody plays. Right before we walk out, coach comes to me, Stump Mitchell. I'll never forget because yeah, I sure. I literally dislike him to this day. He was like, Yeah, no, no, you're only going to play on punt return. That's it. Mm. I'm like, This is a this is this is an All Star game. Everybody should play. No, no, they just want to see you on punt return. That's it. So you're, that's all you're going to do. Damn. And you, we may put you on third down from time to time. You would have been the thousand thousand guy now, man. I mean, you were incredible as it was. I did like that now, in college. Crazily enough, knows you could have done yeah, that. I know we should Damn, have. Brian, Absolutely. I wish it could have happened. All, All right, right. reach into the cup. All right, going to the cup. Maybe I'll pull out two girlies from this one cup. Let me see here. Um, Sicko, disgusting. disgusting. I never watched it. I wouldn't do it. I not. You've never watched it? No. I've n I never actually, when it got big. I don't want to tell Brian because I don't know if he's seen it and he's no. going to Google it. I, have not. I heard I that it had to do with, with digestive stuff and I don't handle that well. And it was a time when like you watched it or you hadn't. It was like that videotape from The Ring. You know? like, what is, what is this? It. It's I, your show. Uh, <laughs> no, let's, let's not. Let's, let's keep moving. <laughs> if, they know, they know. if they know, they, if they know. If they know, they know. All right. Am I, give me a voice to do it in this time. I did a game show last time. What type of theme do you want now? Uh, I'd like it to be the beginning of an Are You Afraid of the Dark kind of scary at home Goose Friday. Bumps. Goosebumps. Okay. R.L. Stein. If you could add one player, this is 900 number. If you could add one player from any team unto the Dolphins, who would it be? Mm. Okay. Do I have to go or you go? There's two ways to think about this. Go on. I'll give you two of mine. There's the, I'd love to put Patrick Mahomes on the Dolphins to see how many games like he that. could win with the same roster in him. And then there's a notion of sending someone to the Dolphins as punishment. <laughs> like sending perfect. Like, no, you're not suspended. You need to go play for I'll the Dolphins. Go down there. So there's two ways to kind of go. Yeah, like you're sending him to Azkaban. It's like prison. Exactly. You're going to Miami. <laughs> you have to stay a stretch. A lightning scar. A stretch with the head. Dolphins. All right. Well, who would you? Who do you think? Like other than Mahomes, could you send a quarterback down there that would still have success? Could you send a Deshaun? Could no, you send no, no, a Josh no. Allen? This is what you do. What do you got? You say, and I'm gonna use a quarterback and coach. You've had so much success over the last 20 years. You've been so good. You've taken average players and make them look great. You've won Super Bowls mm -hmm. more than anyone can count mm -hmm. in New England. Go on. Now you go down there to Miami, South Beach. Bill Belichick. <laughs> you go down to South Beach, Tom Brady. If find a way to win down there. How about this? How about you that? send Belichick and Brady? Belichick and Brady. All right. So how many games? If left? you want to talk got, about the great, if you want to be the left? greatest, yes. then you go. You go win down there. If there are there are twelve games left. How many games did the Dolphins win? If immediately, as of right now, Belichick and Ooh, Brady go to question. the team. Not a lot. No. Four. <laughs> no, maybe. No. There's, nobody's going to change that. The no, actual no. number compared to the number that we think, we think that they are the most powerful duo that has ever lived. And yes. that, that Belichick would walk in the door and everybody would inherently get better. Yeah. And, and as I said on Monday's show, this is two decades in the making, yeah. what Belichick has. But 
But if you gave him an off season, mm-hmm. oh man, get, get his hands on the roster, the salary. Cap, I got an even sure. better coach. You have to take a uh, 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 hard knocks down there too. And now you're and, in Lefko's office. Here and we then go. You you're take, Mr. Hard Knocks. You take Hard Knocks and line. John Gruden down there and just see how much he goes off <laughs> in the meetings. Knock if you would. I think I think Gruden is is slowly dying on the inside. Right of course he now. is. Which which Gruden are you talking about? Oh, great point. John, though, I saw a quote where it's like the, uh, losing perfect was really not good. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, wow, he can't even speak. Uh-huh. What's good word. is that he got 10 million bucks to do it. I mean, like if, if you put Khalil Mack on the Dolphins, yeah. how much better does that team get? If Aaron Donald like, marginally, I, you can avoid them. You can kind of avoid Mac, kind of. Yeah. Certainly can't avoid his father, Sandy. But I honestly think <laughs> Khalil Mack's an interesting one because I think he, like, wrecks the whole offense. I think – I think, and I, and I want to say this, too. We're talking about sending someone to the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins would beat the Redskins right now. I agree. I, I think the Redskins are the worst team in the league. And I saw today that Jay Gruden said that – they said, what's your plan at quarterback? And he goes, quote, we don't really have one right now. Yeah. It's an exact quote. That I think the sense, Dolphins though. would beat the Redskins yeah. by 10 points right now. Because the, the Dolphins have a plan at least. Everybody knows, you know what I mean? And and I look at Jay Gruden. Jay Gruden has become completely powerless. Mm-hmm. When you can't decide who's playing quarterback I for know. your team, why would you even want to coach anymore? And, and I look at that franchise from the top down. They are worse than the Dolphins. They've screwed it up. They are. Yeah. I had this, we had this question because so it's the Haskins goes in mid-game, which I know you talked about this, was terribly executed. Yes. It, give him a clean start, prepare for the week. They just threw him in the middle of the game. So now they play the Patriots this week. Oh my God. One of the greatest defenses of all time. We still don't know what they're going to do. Right. The problem is if they play Haskins in this game, which I think that they should, because you can't like start opponent dodging. You can't say, well, we would play it, but it's the Patriots. Let's wait to the Dolphins. That's lame. However, Haskins against this Patriots defense could throw six interceptions. Yeah. Like it could go absolutely. You could ruin the kid. It, it could be cataclysmic. You could ruin them. They could lose by 50 points. Yeah. But then what do you start Case Keenum? And then what if Case Keenum again throws three interceptions? Well, you put Haskins back in might again? might be playing Colt McCoy. I know. And like he has been facing an That's... ongoing injury that the doctors of D- of the Washington Redskins can't figure out because their doctors are fucking awful. <laughs> like I would rather play on the Dolphins than the Washington sure. Redskins. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, plus, listen, Jay Gruden is on the way out, right? I mean, he has to be. And is he probably even that bitter about it? There's all this speculation he'll go and join John Gruden. They'll move to Vegas, which means next year Jay Gruden won't be in Washington, which will probably be the worst year in human history to be in Washington, D.C., because there will be an election going on, and it'll be hell. Are there worse things? Go to Vegas. Fine. You'd be a coordinator. You'll do great. I I I think he actually wants to. I think so, too. I did not even think about the election. That is the saving grace for the Washington Redskins. How about that? Because they're going to be such a – they're they're moved to the back page where nobody even cares anymore. They could go in 16 or 16 and 0. It's not going to be about the president. Did you watch the video, the one that I'm talking about? Yes. You did? Yeah. (laughs) That was an era where – that was the first video where I saw reaction videos become a thing. Filming people watching Watching the the video. video. Yeah, sure. Yes. I think I saw it on E-Bombs World back in the day. That was the one. I loved E-Bombs Me too. Come on. You got more. Do you remember the kid in the orange sweatshirt that did the robot on E-Bombs World? Is that Damn Daniel guy? No. 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 I'll play it at the end. I used to do the soundboards with Robert De Niro and Schwarzenegger. All right, so you're going to do – you're going to do – a clown at a birthday party. Yeah. Again, all of my voices sound the exact same. So, so don't do it. <laughs> Look like a clown at a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Listen, uh, <laughs> That's good. Who was on the Mount Rushmore of angry runs? I mean, who's the guy? Who's the guy that's on the Mount Rushmore of angry runs? So, I like it. Four angry runs. <laughs> we have to deduce all the angry runs, which is another segment that you do on Good no. Morning Football that I really enjoy. Thanks. I enjoy that one. I enjoy uh, Wall Streeters. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you guys were doing with the rock and roll shit. Oh, yeah, that was nuts. Was that your idea? No, but we, he said, let's try something wild on a Wednesday. And everybody pretend to be a rock star and just, like, call someone out who needs to be a rock but star. But you were like, yeah! I, I, I was Dave that. Grohl. I tried to do it. Dave Grohl's a talented guy. I had no idea until I was in the middle of the segment. I'm like, crap, this is bombing. This is really hard. <laughs> It's really hard. Try but, hard, bro. But Thank angry, you. angry runs, and uh, Nate obviously does toe, de- yeah. toe drag swag. But um, if we had to deduce it to four angry runs of all time, are okay. there any that jumps in that are? Of that, course. Okay. What, you mean you mean like in the history of football, or like in the last few years? Uh, like history that we've of done football. The of course. Okay. But what do you Mar- got? Marshawn Lynch is he's the he's he the, the poster same. boy for yeah. this. Tracy Porter, stiff, yeah. so, stiff, stiff arms, arms him. He runs over the twenty people. Shaking. Yeah. You know what's funny about that play is anytime they replay it. 
they always cut it on the network because he grabs his balls at the end. Yeah. So home whenever you see that, yeah, home of the, they always they stop right before he gets to the end zone because uh-huh. they don't want to show that. It was like this this uh, like the money t- shot. track twelve on the album That's is right. like explicit all of a sudden yeah, and they took yeah. that off. All right, so I know that you played and you're a phenomenal running back, mm-hmm. but Kyle is the expert in this. Do you accept? Marshawn's run against the Saints as one of your top four. Yes, it's in the Washington spot of the Rushmore. A hundred percent. This wow, is easy. Um, would you like to submit? Uh, that hundred percent. I would like to submit every mm. run from the Marcus Dupree thirty for thirty. Ooh. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I've it's never really good. seen. Who was he playing against? These I little don't, babies. I don't even know. Who was the? Uh, I would say if my real submission would be. Bo Jackson running over Bosworth. Bosworth. Stone Cold. I watch it and I'm not that impressed, but every person that talks about it, it was like a a legacy defining truck stick. Yes. So that's why I'm well, submitting well, it, but it is your. You got to know what Bosworth meant at that time. Right. Of course. Big, physical, nasty linebacker. What do you want to say? He was in State? Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. yeah. Just, just, he was the man. The smartest thing he did was sell, like, fuck Bosworth t shirts. Yeah. Oh my God, I know. Genius marketer. You got to at some point look into, like, the oral history of the movie Stone Cold that Brian Bosworth did. Fascinating thing. The sound bites from his agent when they were trying to make him a movie star are so good. They're like, the first script was not passable. We wanted to Bosify it. And that's an act. They use Bosify as a quote. And we think that Brian Bosworth is going to take Hollywood by storm. It was so good. Um, Do you accept that as one of your four? I do not accept it as one of my four. And I'll tell you why. Uh, The angry runs that I look at, the context is not that important. Meaning that Bo versus Bosworth was the seminal moment in football, but the pure physicality of it, I've seen much better. I, I throw out, because I celebrate, I don't want just the stars. I Can want I do the one little more? guys. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? When AP ran over William Gay. 100%. Is that on there? Hundred percent. That I was love is it? that one. Do you remember it? I'll pull it up. You I need to feel watch like it. William Gay is. Uh, uh, he should run him over. <laughs> yeah, I but, mean, but, but, not but that what? he just was. He's a corner. It's not like he ran over uh, Greg Lloyd yeah, or something he like that. Should right? run that but, guy. But over. again, context doesn't matter. I don't care about the context. But Brian's bringing up something different, which is the quality of opponents. That's right. Running over a corner is different than running over defensive. I tackle. have a good one, and this is old school. Let's watch. Let's watch. This one's really good. Oh, yeah. And he, and he stepped, stepped on over him. him. I think yeah. he stepped on him, too. But like listen, that. four spots all time, it's I a know, great one. You're right, you're right, you're right. Like, what I'm looking for, let me, one of them that has to make it is we go back before all of our times, the Earl Campbell in the dome, head down, it, it crushed somebody's sternum, yes. jersey ripped off, still running. That one is 100. That's so in the Jefferson So he was the spot. guy where the jersey completely ripped 100%, off? 100%. The powder yes. blue, beautiful Oilers jersey tears off. And if you look at it now, I mean, he would be kicked out of the league for doing it. It's the crown of the helmet right into, into the sternum. Chest. And you can just see the wind. Remember that old shot of that cannonball going to that guy's stomach in slow motion with the goggles? That's what it was. That, so Earl it, is in. Marshawn is in. It also reminds me of what was the football, the soccer player Zidane? Uh, Zinedine Zidane from France in the World Cup headbutted a dude. That to me is God, one of those great. moments. Was sometimes. that pre Twitter? Yeah. Yes. That, yes. Is, that is one of my moments that it 08, felt 09. like it was trending, and even though Twitter didn't exist. You're like, right. we, we, like there was all this talk about JLo and the Versace dress and how that invented Google Images. You're right. Zinedine, say his name again. Zinedine Zidane. And now he's like a manager of like a very prominent <laughs> club, but it was the image of him like yeah. this, and he didn't run up, he just went. And the dude felt, oh. Yeah. And he's, he's like the picture of class and respect in that sport. And he just completely it lost It was like Roger shit. Federer, instead of shaking the doll's <laughs> hand, headbutting him in the face. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Oh, it was a great moment. All right, so we have two. So we have Marshawn and Marshawn have... and Earl Campbell. And Brian, I think you got more. Well, Earl, you stole my Earl Campbell. Well, Earl Campbell's first ballot. That's easy. But I think sweetness okay. has to be Against the Chiefs? There. I mean, there's so many of them. Oh, the Chiefs make me think of Christian Okoye for some reason in my mind. But then but, he got at water. Yeah, he got beat, beat yeah. up a little bit. But Walter Payton used to, I, I can't think of one run in particular, but he ran over everybody. Mm. Sure. For a small running back. Google Walter runs through the Chiefs. Anybody listening or watching, he has his, his best run of his career was against the Chiefs when he was a young player, and he broke about seven tackles on the play. Uh-huh. That is the one, and that is also admitted as well. It's not a touchdown. It's about a 17-yard oh, run. Oh, so it's the one that says Walter Payton versus Kansas City Chiefs. That's the one. Like, this is the All one. Right, watch so he this. runs out to the right, eludes, gets a very On nice the block, spin. Now watch this starts. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, breaks three, four blowers. Oh, oh take wow. That. Take He's that. still going. Man. 
And this is young Walter. Young Walter. So good. They were down. They were so down good. three touchdowns at the time. Came back to win. The best part is that next week they played the Vikings, and he had like 270 yards rushing in the game Man, and set yeah. the single game record. Walter Payton is in. That's All right. It. So you take us. Who is definitely third? Do you have another definite third? Definite third is going to be Payton against the Chiefs. Okay, so that's in there. Yes, I have a personal favorite, um, and I, it's Brian. It's definitely one when you were playing. There is a game that was 49ers versus Jets overtime. Garrison Hurst in overtime, stiffed arm to Jets safety on about a 90-yard touch yeah, and run to walk yes. off as Mariucci went crazy on the sideline. Yes. That's a personal favorite of mine. That was a really good stiff arm. I'm thinking about all the runs where Jerome Bettis sure. flattened a guy. Yeah. Flattened Erlacher a couple times, first ballot guy. What about when A. Antonio Brown was returning a punt? Jump kicked the punter. And kicked the punter in the face. I love yes. that. If we're talking about angry runs. You're right, because that was really cruel and mean to yes. kick a punter of all people. What about OJ and the Bronco? I mean, he was running angry. He was running angry Sorry. with AC in the Sorry. front seats, Sorry. right? Sorry. That's so wrong. <laughs> they were driving slow, though, on the 405. You're right. If they were going over the speed limit. Yes. It made for a lot of jokes, even to this day, about any time the Broncos have a white guy. You're like, well, that's the slowest I've seen a white Bronco go since the 405. <laughs> I love those jokes. Brendan Peyton, Stokely used to get some of those. Peyton Hillis probably had some angry runs. 100%. Maybe? Or his precursor, Mike Allstott, had some angry runs. For Mike sure. Allstott. Yeah flattened humans. Mm -hmm. Mark right. Ingram right now is one of the great angry Mark runners. Ingram, absolutely. We were having a conversation His today. His run on the, on the Dolphins this year, I think might be the best this year. It won. It won angry runs on the show. Yeah. It was fantastic. Did it fantastic. beat Dawson Knox? Yeah. No, Dawson Knox was the next week. Can I give you a producer tip? Yeah. You should have a carryover and they should have to okay. compete with the, the week before. We tried this and I'll tell you why. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you stuff. Do you remember years ago yes. when they used Butt to do. Butt fumble lasted yes. for six years. Butt fumble lasted for six years and it's really funny because Mark Sanchez does this and finally ESPN said, we're retiring it. We have to do the segment. We have to carry on. We had a moment like that last year, if you remember, on Monday Night Football, Vance McDonald of oh, the Steelers yeah. ran over Chris Conti. It was yes. the greatest anger run ever. Yes. That's probably on the Rushmore. And for like two months, we played it, and we're like, we got to just retire because it's never, ever going to get beaten. So we used to serialize it. All right, so I'm going to give you a different producer note. Then you should have like a Hall of Fame where these are the untouchables. And if you notice, like if it's if it wins like four or five weeks in a row yes. – yeah, I think you need to. It goes into the ring it. of anger. It's too good of a Retire segment. Retire it. That's, That's right. Put it in a ring. That's fantastic. You got another one, Brian? I, don't I know have you have another. I can't Do you have one. an angry run? Do you have one where you used to farm the fuck out of somebody? Yes. Or yeah, ran them I over do. Now we played. We played San Fran. This is early on. Okay. And I bust this long run, and it was me and Mike Adams who actually went to Delaware. We played against each other in college, and he's trying to tackle me, and I give him a nice stiff arm. Uh -huh. It's just me and him. Uh huh. Stiff arm down the sideline. And I don't think he falls. He, he goes backwards, obviously, and I end up scoring. But it was a pretty good run. It, it wasn't necessarily angry, but it was a nice physical run. I had another run. We up here playing the Jets. We're um, – what is their old linebacker's name? Brian uh, Cox. Calvin no, Pace. no, 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 no. He was, he was with the uh, – Oh, with uh, the Vilma? Yeah, Jonathan Vilma. Okay. Nice. For some reason, we're on the sideline. And it was rare because I don't I, – that wasn't my game, running people over. But I like to take an angle, and then when you have a weak shoulder – Take you down. Mm. So I shook him a little bit, got the angle, and boom, ran him over. And on the side, I talked a little trash to Did him, you? too. It wasn't my game. but What I kind of a trash talker were you? Like, what'd you say? Uh, some things you probably shouldn't repeat on any television. You as fucking ugly as yeah. chocolate and peanut butter, Vilma. Let's fill it over, baby. No, it, just, yeah, it, was all, it was all bad. Yeah, it was all bad. Do you have... Do you have an angry run in your life that, that you hearken back Princeton to? Princeton versus Yale. Yeah, I, it, it, it's a good guess. I think mine was against Brown. Yeah. Battle of the brains. <laughs> Something like that. I ran over a guy against Brown, and I, I, I got to be really excited about it. And Ross Tucker, who I know has been on the show, was a guard at the time. Yeah. And he talked all this shit for me. He got in somebody's face nice. after I did it, too. So nice. Brown, and then back in high school, probably. But then we're getting into Uncle Reese. Is that a thing that happens, that offensive linemen talk shit sometimes for the star players? I think so. Don't you think, Brian? Don't you, didn't I, I Runyon ever talk think, for you? No, he never did. Was John Runyon walking around being like, Westbrook right. just No, he wasn't. Ron, John really, it, it took me, it wasn't to my second, the middle of my second year before me and John Runyon actually had a conversation. Really? Just one day I was in the hot tub and he just was like, hey, I'm coming to bring some stuff over and you're going to sign it. I was like, okay. And that, was <laughs> that was it. That was, a conversation. that was the beginning of our relationship. I remember when you guys used to play in the national game and you would say, you know, Brian Westbrook, Villanova and uh -huh. everything. He would always be like, John Runyon, Michigan. And it was so all business and yeah. no for no levity at all. John you tell he was, meant business. John was a nasty dude. Like, I watched John. I was in the hot tub one day. He slipped and fell on the steps of the hot tub. Oh, shit. Broke his tailbone. Aww. What? 
broke his tailbone. Now, I don't know if you guys, have you guys ever bruised your tailbone? Yeah, sure. You, you can't walk. I on the ice You can't before. do nothing. Yeah. You can't do any, uh, anything. You I can sat do none down of those really things. fast one time. Yeah, really. It's like, yeah, great job. And so he plays. He plays the next week. Wow. He, he gets his his the, his butt basically shot up. <laughs> his tailbone shot up every week. Oh, my. He didn't God. practice at all. He had to sit like one of those little donut things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he used to have to oh, battle straight. Holy hand, shit. A, he's, I have he's one. He's I, look, crazy. I'm going to be honest. Your Walter Payton clip was great. Okay. It's not a top four of all time. What do you got? That's very biased. Derrick Henry's run against the Jaguars on Thursday night yeah. for 99 yards, where he stiff armed the entire roster. It was the one of the greatest things I've roster, ever seen. The entire city of Jacksonville, the entire yeah. lineup of Limp Bizkit, he, every single person he stiff armed. <laughs> like, 99 yard touchdown. Too. I would like to, to figure out in your brain, <laughs> yeah. how did you get to Limp Bizkit right there? Limp what Biscuit. about Jacksonville? The stiff arms got you there. I just want to slow it down. Chocolate right. starfish and the hot dog flavored water. No, um, interesting, interesting I, album I, title. <laughs> I think that they're from Jacksonville. I think that Fred Durst et al are from Jacksonville. I think. Fred Durst. And if they're not, they 100% should be. Don't tell me they're like. If from, you're because yeah, Jacksonville. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I knew it. Oh, here's the run. Here's the run. What do you got, Jack oh, Henry? Nine, not, nine yards. Oh, it's, though this is your run. Yeah, it's not. Again, oh, wait, it's okay, not, yeah. It's not so, angry. This is Mike angry. Adams. But for me, for what oh, I was, oh, I remember that's that. good. That's I remember good. that. Take that in the face, my guy. And Adams. you scored. Yeah, and we always it. like it when you finish it too. Yeah, let's go. Did you just type in Brian Westbrook highlights? Like that's so cool. What did you type in to get yeah, that? Yeah, Brian Westbrook highlights. That and it's like awesome. Link has I, been visited yeah. seven hundred times. I make on this the computer. kids watch it before they go to school. <laughs> <laughs> they should, yeah, man. Yeah, they should. That's oh, that's good. I'm what, jealous. What moment in your life do you wish you could have on YouTube to show your kids that you are actually like? Well, I'm merciful. I have the one that I don't like. The my real world experience has a like shockingly light internet presence. Mm -hmm. It's not out there much. There's not a lot of pictures. No, I mean Google Images is not kind to me. But like I remember, there was a couple years back that they were introduced. They were doing something called MTV Classic, and they're like, "It was great. We'll run all these old Road Rules seasons and Real World seasons." I'm like, "Please don't ever run my season again." I think I'm in a co-ed shower at one point. I'm in the confessional. I was 22. I really hope that never comes out. Kyle, you know what? You know what's weird? I love the Real World. Yeah, you didn't watch my season. And I literally didn't realize until just now that you were on the dog on Real World. That's it, Chicago, man. I remember that. We aired in 2002, and you watched it. Yes. I was like the the annoying white guy yeah, with yeah, the girl yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dave Chappelle like, made. You're like, I like Kyle, but I don't know. There's something wrong with him. Dave yeah, Chappelle right? made a skit about you. 100. percent I was basically the guy in the skit, and I was you the do worst. You look like that actor. Yes, I do. No, yes, I, I honestly do. don't think it's a. Kid has got some. Um, <laughs> I was like the. The archetype of the guy who comes into the show who like has the off the season girlfriend. You stabbed my dad. That was me. That was me. It was. Oh, you me. had you had the off. I, 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 it's good. <laughs> we like we like Chappelle's show. I do too. Oh I'm man, gonna, what do you got? Let's see. Oh, uh, what should my voice be, Kyle Brandt? Oh, oh I think it should be. Um, you are a Sesame Street character. Hi, Kurt. <laughs> Don't think. Just say a number. How many NFL coaches could you beat in arm wrestling? That was from Don't Hee-haw. think. Don't think. How Ooh. many coaches could you beat in arm wrestling right now? Say a number. Go. 10. 15. 0. Uh, I could. Uh, no, all the young. You're all the way young, too low. You're way, way too low. All the young coaches, all the young little offensive coordinators. Sean McVay is like 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, Sean McVay has guns. He works no out. way. Now, now the Cincinnati beat him in coach. Wrestling. I could not beat Sean McVay in our Max Taylor. Matt LaFleur? I like you calling him the Cincinnati coach. That's his name. I don't need to learn his name. I, the Cincinnati coach. I'm watching, let, me, let me talk not Marv. real quick. I'm watching the fucking game, <laughs> yeah. and they're down 21 points yep. with five minutes left in the third quarter, and it's a crucial third down, and they bring Tyler Boyd in to block a defensive end. Yeah, I crazy. sat here, and I yell at coaches that use tight ends to block defensive ends. Receiver. They use their best wide receiver, and the, it looked like the Bengals were running down the clock on purpose. I know. Yeah. I, fuck, Coaches all like, think of themselves. That is the worst coaching. This I is heard. supposed to be the fun year for Cincinnati. Marv's finally gone. We're having a new change, and it's like it's like shit. Can Marv come back? It's sort of like don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Sort of you like think that. It's going to be fun. Christina Applegate. The dishes are done, man. Well, let me reference. think about the guys that you, you know that you about. couldn't beat. No, in I love that movie. movie. So Mike Vrabel probably is a guy that he would beat the shit out of me. Yeah, no, Mike Vrabel. He was a nasty player. I remember playing him. He was just a like mean, I'm not nasty beating Pete Carroll in a fucking arm. I'm not. 
Pete, Pete Carroll is Carol like is almost 70 years old. 120 years old. I am not arm wrestling Pete Carroll. It's not going to go well. <laughs> Pete Carroll, but he's also the guy that's going to do the over-the-top hat flip and be like, I've been practicing all week. Yeah. like a switch. Yeah. 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 And he will, he will not and he'll be chewing the shit Andy out of his Reed gum. Andy just going to lean into it. And yeah. Forget yeah. about yeah. his body. body. I Brian, think Brian you, you, Flores like probably is the guy that you. that you don't want to beat. You don't want to Flores looks wrestle. like he might mean business. But other than that, I mean. Like Nagy, like. Nagy, no. No, no, he's a quarterback. Nagy and if you think guy. that you get Belichick, tss, tss, he like stabs you in the neck really <laughs> Blow quick. dart in the karate. <laughs> I'm not beating Gruden. I'm not beating Tomlin. Gase? Gruden? Gruden? Stop Which Gruden looking again? at my fucking arm. I am sizing you up Gruden? right now. I'm you visually I don't know how you. this turned into a me thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got a hypercolor sweatshirt on. That is really, really cute It's to uh, distract you <laughs> from really, the love really handles. Cute sweater. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, do you think you could beat Bruce Arians in an arm wrestling contest? Oh, yeah, sure. Like I, the Bruce Arians is, a, is an older gentleman. Yeah, sure. Are you <laughs> someone that gentleman. has Are you someone that has arm wrestled a lot in your life? No. Nah, nah. How about you? No. Okay. No. But right. I have watched over the top many, many have times. You, are, are you, are, I know you are your friend's child. child. I don't put myself <laughs> into situations. That Bruce, get over here. Come on. Put your arm here. Jason, put your arm on the table. <laughs> Sean Payton would kick my ass. What? Stop yeah. it. Do you remember the arm wrestling scene from The Fly with Jeff Goldblum? Do you ever see The Fly? No. Jeff Goldblum, ours, and he has the powers of a fly. <laughs> And he breaks someone's arm completely in half. It's completely disgusting. You got to see it. Yeah. You, after the show. The powers up, of Derek a fly. Henry, what, yes. fly. What powers do flies have? Well, flies are one of those things where they can carry like 10 times their own weight or something yeah, like that. So okay. when he becomes a fly, he becomes very powerful. Yeah, All right. So here's the thing. You guys, you guys aren't beating yes. Vrabel. You're not beating uh, uh, Anthony Lynn. Like that's not. Yeah, he looks like Lynn is very well built. Yeah, he, that's he, a good Dan line. Quinn would rather die than lose to you. <sighs> Ryan but, Flores, I don't think I can. But like, think but we like, can get Dan Quinn. But like the Doug Petersons, the oh, Kyle yeah. Shanahan's, easily, easily, easily. I got him. Sh- Matt I mean, Lafleur, easily. Who would you rather arm wrestle, Doug Peterson or Kyle Shanahan? I I think I'd Kyle rather, Shanahan. Really? Kyle, he's skinny. Yeah. But he's, he's I feel like he's in shape. Peterson is a big man, but like I don't know, getting yeah, a little. He got, yeah, he doesn't have he, he doesn't have the workout arm. vibe. Doug doesn't give that. Yeah, also, I feel like Shannon does like Orange Theory or something trendy. Like maybe. I don't know about but that. Also, <laughs> Orange Theory. <laughs> but also, Doug Peterson was a quarterback, and I think their arms are naturally stronger than everybody else's arms. And Kyle, like I've seen him out, like. I can take him. You, you can take him? I just think he probably has that other gear that I don't have. I'm pretty sure you could take Sean McVay, too. He may be Jack, but he's still small. I saw Sean McVay in a bar. I don't want to bench press against short people, and I don't want to arm wrestle because you guys have such a better That's torque. True. That is Because true. your arms are so short. That's yeah. true. Yeah, like I'm the Vince Vaughn of media at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You are. All right, my turn? Yeah. All right, here we go. How many of these things did you put in this cup? We have two more. Two more. Uh, let's do it in a voice of uh, John Facenda. It's the year 2037. Boom, 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 Who had the boom, best boom, overall boom, boom, career boom. out of Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray? There, I got it now. Or Daniel Jones? 2037. Who had the best career? Lamar, Baker, Kyler, Daniel Jones. Lamar, Baker, Kyler, Daniel Jones. Okay. I'm flying out of the gates with Baker. I'm going to take Baker. That's where my brain went first. I he also, has the best talent around him. That helped. True. I just, I, I'm going to look at the guy. I can't go with Lamar. I watch Lamar and I love watching him. I just, every time I watch him, I get so scared he's going to get hurt. Every time. I remember the same way. I felt the same way about Mike Vick. Mm-hmm. Running around on a preseason game, breaking his leg. RG3, I was completely seduced during the rookie year. Those guys are running around too much. They get hurt. And I don't want to see it happen to him, but I, I don't know. I can predict that it probably will. I, I, I think my first guess would probably be Baker, but I'm gonna go, I'll go Daniel Jones. Already. I just think he has something. And I think, you know, he comes from a great lineage of of of, of, of Cutcliffe. You know, he knows how to teach quarterbacks. They're they're thinking their way through it. Doesn't necessarily have to have the strongest arm, but he can throw. He's athletic. I, I think they'll put some talent around him. Obviously, you have a running back when Saquon gets healthy. Yeah. That, that's gonna help him a little bit. Adam go, is Daniel Jones. Have the dukest face of all time. Can you name yeah. someone who has the dukier face? Leitner, Grayson Allen, Grayson Allen, Shevsky, Tucker Max. <laughs> Grayson Allen is the dukiest. Dukier than Daniel Jones? Yes. Okay. Because What's the little guard's name? Uh, Grayson Allen. Well, there's no, also the, JJ the old, Reddick. The old, the, old, the, the old guard. Like uh, when, when we were kids, John Sheffer. Oh, uh, Bobby Hurley. Bobby, Bobby Hurley. Hurley yeah, Cherokee Parks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, you think that Grayson's still the dukiest face of all time? He, he does look like Ted Cruz. Too, that's what help. I was going to say. Yeah. And so it you guys really literally all the white guys from Duke. They all have the same face in your mind. That's true. Pretty much. All the white guys have the same face. Shane um, that's right. I'm, I'm going to pick Kyler Murray. 
<laughs> so wrong. Why? To be different or because you believe it? No, because I'm sitting here and I'm going, I understand what you're saying about Lamar. I believe that Lamar can continue to make uh, strides. I, I think that he's so. still having an issue throwing deep balls. And that's my question about Lamar is, is that accuracy going to get there? Um, I still think he's so much better than people think he is, but I don't know if he'll reach the peak. I believe that Baker is the most talented in terms of just throwing the mm. ball, but there's a lack of elusiveness that I think people thought he might have. Yeah, he and, can't run. And, really. and, and his his inability to play well under pressure right now, I need more proof that that's going to continue. Mm. Um, in terms of Daniel Jones, I'm just not getting on board of him being the, like, I don't think his talent is anywhere close to the other three. I believe that his ceiling is below all of those guys, but his floor might be higher because he, he can already throw it better than Lamar. I look at Kyler and this is still the same fucking team that Josh Rosen could barely put up three points with last right. year. And when I saw that second half against the Lions, that's the reason that they were willing to trade the seventh pick in the draft they traded up for last year and looking awful to the rest of the media, his deep ball accuracy mm -hmm. and some of the touch that he has. They went out there and they drafted three to four wide receivers, and none of them have hit. I know. Like That's Keyshawn about, uh, Johnson. Yeah, I know. And so, so he has no talent. He has 40-year-old Larry Fitzgerald. His offensive line is in shambles. But I still see plays every week that I go, that's some special-ass shit. Mm -hmm. And so because we're looking 20 years from now, Saquon might only be around for four or five more years. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen, Me but too. who knows? But I look at Arizona, I expect them to, to clean house of the front office. They're going to invest a lot more there. I just, I think he has the highest ceiling out of all those guys. And right now I actually prefer my guy to have nothing around him because the other ones, it's hard to evaluate Baker. Mm -hmm. He's not always going to have Odell and mm -hmm. Jarvis. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this though. The more I think about Lamar Jackson, I mean, he, he made some things happen down in Louisville. I mean, sure. he, he, oh he God, did that. Um, I think he'll still improve as a quarterback over the years. We're talking about 20 years from now. But as a running type of quarterback, he's probably the best pure runner. Michael Vick is obviously the fastest. Yes. But he, he makes people miss in a running back type of way. And it looks not like a quarterback running which is totally different than a running back. Right. He looks like he can. So when we talk about getting hurt and injured, it seems different with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, not, so. I don't have fear with Lamar when he runs. You don't? No, because I have never really seen him take a hard hit. He knows I, how to move. He, he gets out of bounds Great really angles. well. But I will say that what you're saying is why Kyle's scared. He is the kind of guy that'll like wave on a linebacker sure. yeah. and not see someone behind him. Yeah. He does. And, and that's how quickly it could change. Well, I hope he learns that. I mean, that's the part he has to learn. Where do you come out on the nickname Danny Dimes? Are you into Let it? Let me hear where you stand on it. I use it. I, I believe he's Daniel Dimes, and then when he runs, he becomes Danny Dimes. Is that true? Yeah, like I believe that he's only Danny when he runs, but he's very much Daniel when he's in the pocket. Okay, that's he kind of evolves in the middle of the play. He over the. I, I tend it. to. He does. He, like a switch. I tend to look down on a, a nicknames. Use alliteration as a crutch. Just D and D. I don't like that. I think it's kind of corny. I think he deserves better. Um, this is your wheelhouse. So what have you better, come up huh? with? We, yeah, listen, we were, we were batting it around on our show. Um, the only thing I like about Danny Dimes is that someone then suggested that he should be called Vineyard Dimes, which is absolutely perfect with his attire. Still vineyard Vines. Um, yeah. And let me I see. Schrager too. was saying that um, Dimes are an old currency. This is this is he's all about new and the next wave, and that he should be Danny Crypto, which I kind of mm. liked. And then I've been calling him. I was referring to a long time that Eli was this great dog that you had, and Eli's a good dog, good dog, and you love him, and he does his trick still, but he's kind of walking into sliding glass doors. He kind of turned into old Yeller. So Danny Dimes, I've been calling him New Yeller because he's the one who actually finally put down yeah. old, old Yeller well, well after he should have been, I think. So I don't love Danny Dimes, but I still can't land on something that's just perfect. And I think I, he needs it. I do it. agree with you, like what you were saying about the, the Duke face. Duke there, is, yes. There's something there about his attire uh, that I think could be really made fun of more. The social chair is what he looks like, right? Like he walked, walks well, walking into the game and he's like, the Pi Fi's want to move the fall formal and I got to rebook the buses. Like I've been the in the comp troller. The comp troller. Comp That's good. Troller. That's good. Start saying it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll, I'll tell you this, though. <laughs> Guys have to earn their nicknames. Okay. He hasn't earned a nickname yet. Mm. He's 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 Daniel Jones. That's who he is. I like he, that. You have to earn a nickname in this league. Okay, but then we need to have Played a nickname just in case when he whenever he yeah, gets we, we need to have it on alert. To, oh, what do you do to earn a nickname? Well, you play good. 
Well, like, you're just terrible. Like, what if Daniel Jones led like a 20 point comeback and then ran in a touchdown at the end to like overcome like a, and lost his like starting running back in that game? Would that yeah. be enough? That would that would that would start. The That's what he fucking rolling. did against the. <laughs> that will start the ball to rolling. We'll start thinking about it. You can't call him a nickname until you produce in this league. I just, for me, he's such a Daniel that there's nothing Danny about him. That's really part of my issue with the nickname, I guess. That's always bothered me that as athletes, that he just, looks like Fidei. Like if we were going to give him like a city name, it sure. would be Financial District. Plus, Fidei sounds like a fraternity, you know, too. So that's perfect. But those athletes who are the Dannys, I never understood that when you become a grown man, like you're still Jimmy and Tommy and mm-hmm. Danny. Like that always bothered In- me. Ingber has a theory has about D this something. too. D Joe or not D Lo. D it has to be D something. Mm. D Joe? D Joe from the block? Yeah. Danny D-Joe. from the block. Daniel Jones. Danny from Dow the block. Jones, maybe. Wait, what's Ingber's theory about the Dannys and Tommies? Uh that you like you don't perform well if you have like a kid's name. Like Jimmy Garoppolo? Like shouldn't he be Jim? Or like little James Bow Wow. Garoppolo? Bow Wayne. Wayne. Bow Wow just became Bow Wow. Yeah. Joey, the lil. Joey Harrington, Little Wayne, Danny right. Cannell. Has there ever been one that's been fantastic? I mean, some I like Joey Galloway. Some people call him Tommy Brady, but that's nah, no one ever calls Tom. him that. Yeah. He's not Benny Roth. So Jimmy Garoppolo Andy would Dalton. never be good. I think Jimmy Garoppolo might be screwed. He needs to go, and that James Garoppolo sounds incredible. Yeah. That sounds like an error or something James like Garoppolo. that. Amber says Charlie Ward. If he, Maybe if he went by Charles Ward, he would have done better. <laughs> Terrible next Danny player. Marino. No. No, 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 not a chance. There really isn't but one. But Andy Dalton. Terrence Bradshaw would have won even more Super Bowls. <laughs> You're and right. Andrew that's a really Dalton. good one. Ingber, what do you say to Terry? Terrence, Terrence Bradshaw. Terry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said Terry is an actual name, not a nickname. Okay. Oh. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Billy. I, I don't know. I just did Jimmy and the Dannys. I can't take. Billy Sims. Sure. He's not a quarterback. But I think no. it wasn't Philly Sims, you know, no. Phil Sims. That's it. Billy Sims. Is it your turn now? Yeah. Right, what voice should he do here, Kyle? We're wrapping up. Um, I think you should do um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ooh. It's like the easy impression. Everybody does it. Everybody can do it, Brian. I'm sure you're really good at Come it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Which <laughs> random fan base would be the happiest if their team won the Super Bowl? <laughs> this is the best one you've done, Brian. I like this. <laughs> Which random fan base would be the happiest if their team won the Super Bowl <laughs> this year? That's good. See, that's they sounded all sounded like an angry cartoon. They show. all sound yeah. the same. Like when I when I when I'm <laughs> me and my wife, my wife is Panamanian. So when I'm making fun of her dad. Yeah. She's like, you sound like an angry Mexican. Like, it's just, are they all sound the same? That's, that's that, what they sound like. That's all what, of my an Austrian dad, bodybuilder. They, they all my, sound the same. They all, all of my dad's same. accents sound Asian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I was talking to this Russian guy. I'm not going to do the accent. Sure. But <laughs> they all, all defer to that. Yes. I hear you. All right. So the question. I didn't hear the question though. The, the, question, question, the question was actually, which random fan base would you be the happiest, happiest for if they won? So you can't obviously pick Chicago. You can't pick Philadelphia. I can't pick Philadelphia or the yeah. Niners. I know how much you love the Niners. Yeah. But what great. random great fan base, that. if they won, would you actually be very happy for? Because this is something that I think you guys do really well, and I really try and focus on too, is like we shit on Jacksonville earlier, but sure. if Jacksonville won the Super Bowl, awesome. we would be really happy for them. Yeah. And I think um, – Why? But why would you be so happy? What, what, what about Jacksonville? Would you be so happy? So, you know what? I'll share a moment. Um, I went to the Jets-Browns game, Monday Night Football. Stick to Football was doing a podcast out front. Right. And a bunch of these Jets fans were having a huge tailgate. And anytime people are welcoming you to a tailgate, it feels really special. Sure. Eat the ribs. Don't worry about it. All that. And they're like, so are you a Jets fan? I said, no, I'm an Eagles fan. And one of them stopped me and he goes, you know, when you guys won, it gave us hope that mm-hmm. we could win. Okay. And they were like, we were texting each other that night. And they're like, if the Eagles can do it, we can do it. And I look, I'm an emotional guy. And the podcast I did the week after, I really did. I was like crying on the podcast, being like to the fucking Lions fans, because I believe football is one of those things where it impacts your identity. And for a long time, when I was a Philadelphia fan, I was like, This is going to mirror my life. I'll always think that I have potential to achieve things, but I'm not destined for something amazing. Mm -hmm. And I really, for me personally, I'm a fucking psychopath. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl, it made me have more confidence in my own life. I understand. And it really did. I, really? Fuck you. Today, that, that makes me laugh. Left-go left-go that's, show. Well, yeah, how did that happen? Right in my face. <laughs> He's sorry. trying to have an earnest because, moment Because here. I was looking down and reading, and I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, you what wrote, did he just say? What did you write down? Piece of shit? Yeah. Cry, yeah. Clown. this asshole. Why is he always crying? Stuff like well, I that. cry a lot. I'm in touch with my emotion. That's good. You, I bet you cry <laughs> on planes a lot. Plane. You ever watch a movie on a plane? There's yeah, I cried watching the Queen movie. 
<laughs> I cried watching like Hobbs and Shaw. Any movie on a plane will make you cry. There's something about the altitude. And I'm just like up there. And I'm just, yeah. like, and just people all around you and everything. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that apparently that was all, the worst therapy I've ever gotten. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I liked Thanks. It. The therapist begin. laughed at you. It's so not you your don't fault, Adam. So like when you see fans crying, you think they're crazy? No, no, no. When fans say... When you won, you made me feel like I could do bigger and better things in my life. I'd be like, yes. really? That's what that's what yes. it is. No, bro, it fucking is. I, I just don't. I've been like, yeah. That's why the show is great because you're teaching me about football, and I'm teaching about why fans sit outside for days or will travel to but, London. But how does that make you feel like now you can go be the best host ever? All right, let's really cut into this. Fucking A. Yeah, uh, especially uh, that 2000s, one. when you guys went to fucking four NFC championship games, yeah. the thing is, is that when I would see the Giants fan, all, all I would get is fucking destroyed. Or the Cowboys fan, they're like, you don't have a fucking ring. You're a loser. And yeah, and you're a loser. Right? Yeah, you are. And thus... It, that's the reason we get so fucking upset is because we don't have any control, but we are completely defined by that. And so we're at the mercy of that. And the thing is, is my dad never saw a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. My grandfather never, my grandfather was on his deathbed and the nurses came running because running there was yelling. And it was that one game where you beat the fucking Vikings wow. and the ball popped up and yeah. they, they, he had not had that much energy for months. And that was like, That's I'm going to cool. see a Super Bowl. And so it's so ingrained into who I am. I had so many moments of my life where I couldn't communicate with people about anything. It was like our ideas were so different, what we believed in, our core values, but we agreed on the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Like, I have friendships where we have nothing else to talk about except for that fucking team. And I look at it, and then, like, I go last night, I'm listening to comedians talk about stuff, and one of them is really big into philosophy. Ryan Holiday is going to be on the podcast on Saturday, and I'd have nothing to add. I'm. It's part of my life. It's fucking weird, bro. Sure. I don't know what to tell you. But I, I think that was actually makes. You know, I make fun of you because it's still funny. But yeah, I, 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 I think that what makes what makes the NFL and their fans so special, though. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I mean, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's special because that that feeling that it's us. We're yeah. in the trenches. We're in training camp with you. I remember we used to go no, to training don't, camp. No, but don't sugarcoat it. You believe then for a long time that that whole notion was bullshit. No, I, I think that I just, I, I, I love the fact that our fans can associate with us, that they can be with us. I, I just, I, I don't know that me winning a football game should make you feel that you can go be of better course. in life. But well, that's, that's just that's kind why of the way that, that clip I went viral because it was real. When the guy was like, "I ca I caught a baby," unlike Aguilar, and he was like, "I've been thinking about it all day." Hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Right, right. And that list, that Eagles Super Bowl, there's been 53 of them. That one was unique. It wasn't yes. just like, "Well, we got a great team this year and we just beat everybody." Mm -hmm. It was like, "We got knocked down and we got back up, and you too can get back up." Right, and if yeah. you're your backup quarterback in your life could win. I mean, that was a special. I think it could give you some, some certainly give you some, some encouragement to say, you know, you can kind of do it too. I just, I, I was always a self motivated type of guy. Of course, so I was always like, ah, you just. You're a unicorn, Brian. You're yeah, not really? like the guy. No, you're special, I bro. Don't I don't know that. You know that I'm the reason why the Bears double doinked last year. Is that right? Yeah, because I had my shirt off and I was laying on the couch holding onto the bottom, <laughs> and the entire fourth quarter, everything was going our way, and you didn't move. And then when I did that, he missed it. That's commitment. Is that true? I'm a fucking psycho. The That's answer to the question about the fan base. That was nice. Look at that. Was that my nose or my mouth? Your mouth. Oh. That's unbelievable. You never know both. sometimes. Put it right back in. Um, <laughs> Buffalo for sure. Buffalo comes Buffalo to mind. Buffalo is top three. Buffalo. I think, I think what the celebration is going to be. Buffalo, because first of all, Buffalo got to third base a bunch of times in a row right. and never scored, Absolutely. which is bad enough. Buffalo, I think a huge one that if this team won the Super Bowl, it would blow these people's minds. If the Lions won the Super Bowl, blow their minds. So he's got two years already. Yep. Um, and then one of them that's really hot right now, if the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, those people wouldn't know what to do with themselves because they've been looked at as losers, chokers, yeah. all that. Best barbecue in America. And look at that. Imagine the the the, the, the oh burnt tips or whatever they're called. Burnt, burnt ends. ends. Burnt, burnt ends. ends if they won burnt that thing. Burnt tips was your hairstyle during real exactly world. Exactly right. Sugar yeah. Ray. Chic. That's what I did. <laughs> I was Mark McGrath. I think those are my big three. But I, I agree with Kansas City. Now we look at Kansas City and it, we almost are jealous because of what they get to experience with that offense. There are lottery tickets coming in. And Every fan in their life, in the 90 years of being a fan of the NFL, you should have at least one year where you have the best player in the league on your team. Mm -hmm. You have the best team. 
Chiefs fans have waited for this 50 years, whatever it may be. Like, this is the golden era from 2019, right? You got Mahomes. You should go to the Super Bowl. Like, this is the year. And they put in their time. They deserve it. Yeah, and you don't remember all – like, people forget the amount of times they've been screwed. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just, like, in the last decade, like, all time. Oh, yeah, sure, going way back. I'm just I'm, – I'm thinking about, like, the Andrew Luck comeback a few yeah. years ago. And, Wild. Uh, did you have anyone other than his three? Yeah, I had Buffalo the Lions, uh, but just just because they've been bad for so long. I got Cincinnati. That'd yeah. be weird. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of want them to win. You, you kind of want people that have just been terrible. Yes. No playoffs type wins, and you just want them to be good. I, I kind of threw the Browns in there, but they, they this team has kind of taken that feeling away from it just a little bit because they seem so arrogant and brash. As Plus, LeBron bringing a title took some of the steam yeah, out that's of that. Right. If that's that right. had never happened before and Cleveland had nothing and they were going back to Jose Mesa and mm -hmm. Ernest Biner, that would have been bigger. I'm, start, I'm starting I to talk one. myself into Detroit, even bigger Detroit's than Detroit's big. What about Oakland? Is that's Oakland? mine. Yeah. Talk about that. Oakland is one of those teams, much like Dallas that we or, and Pittsburgh, that when they have a, a few years where they're down, people like to say, It'll be good if Oakland's better. It, the, the NFL's better. A better when place when the right. Raiders yes. matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, if Oakland were to win the Super Bowl, um, that fan base, one, they're being, they're having their team taken from them. Yeah. And I mean, I'm thinking if the Raiders won the Super Bowl right now. Yeah, that'd be really one, interesting. Gruden's Super Bowl speech would be oh, like, yeah. can you imagine a parade where like a million people are all knocking? If you hear him, <laughs> like on the That's street, true. you're right. At, like car door, like anything. Car windows are smashing yes. and building windows are being pushed. In. There would be a lot of people getting knocked up too. I, I, Mark I think. Davis, Mark Davis, <laughs> uh, up there, like players getting the confidence to mess with his hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Jimmy Johnson on the sideline. Exactly. exactly. You mess yeah. with the Mark that Davis hair. That sounds super awesome. So that's got to happen this year. It'll also, never like happen. the costumes and the black hole. And Do you remember it feeling that way when they did get to the Super Bowl? Like, did, was it a sensation? It was pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I maybe we're building it up more than I just always remember the Barrett Robbins yeah. and, and, and John Gruden going, boom! Yes. Yeah. But if, if Oakland won, I just feel bad. Like, we're witnessing something that I didn't think would happen anymore. A city losing Team a franchise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that really defined a lot of the 90s and, and, and all that. And I just thought Oakland is a football team. They're getting supersonic. Can you imagine that? Right? It sucks. But this is it. They got to win it this year. It's got to start with Chicago. They got to win this weekend. Mm. I don't think it's happening. I don't tough, think so. tough role for him. <laughs> Shit. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kyle Brandt. This is it. Appreciate That's you, brother. It? Oh, dude. This Do you have is any best. other takes or stuff of that you'd like I had to take? But no, we emptied the cup. And this is, I mean, this is why I like you. There's this one is why thing, I like you. Appreciate there's one thing that we can fill it with. <laughs> what? Find out on blue ribbon. E bombs. Oh, right. hold on. We'll do it before I leave. Hold on. No, I did not. I did not watch the video, but I may watch it on the train home right now. I think we might watch it as soon as we get done. There you go. Shoot right. a video of you watching the video. I want to watch that. All right. You guys are the best. Uh, for Brian Westbrook, the Rocket Man. You have to have a catchphrase. Yeah, what's your catchphrase? For, for Kyle Brand. For the Brand. For the brand. Doesn't he say for the brand, McAfee? So you just. I just stole it from Pat. For like the brand. It. That's my thing. I just Screw came out of my head. You, yeah, I love you, Pat. I'm the LEFKOE man, and we will holler at you guys later. Warren Sharp coming up for Friday. Peace out, homies.